Well, today on Nation, we're talking about soft washing, pressure washing, and uh, is it a good add-on for you? Uh, how do you do it? What do you charge? What do you use? Hopefully, we'll answer all those questions today, so stay tuned to Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from Window Cleaning Resource, and of course, you're here. This is WCR Nation, the window cleaning podcast. Even though today we're talking about soft washing, we get a lot of pressure washers and janitorial and a bunch of different people from different uh, avenues that listen. So, but either way, welcome. And if it is your first time listening, what's going on? Have a look around. We are almost to episode 100. So there's almost 130 minute episodes for you to catch up on. And not all of them suck. Not all of them. Maybe a good portion, but not all. <laughs> no, go back and listen. Uh, either way, I appreciate it. Thanks for being here. If you're watching this on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you are listening on SoundCloud, Google Play, or any of the other podcast platforms, write us a review. Share it. Like it. Love it. Heart it. That's how, uh, that's how I feel awesome. So thank you very much. If you are one of the elite, one of the cool kids... One of the nation. Somebody who buys their supplies through me on top of watching this every week. And I am your rep. What is up? I really genuinely, genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. Listen, I get people all the time who just shoot me a text. And they're like, hey, everything's in my cart. Can you put the order in? I'm ready to put the order in. Cards on file. Like that little bit means the world to me, guys, really. So thank you very much for everybody who puts their orders in through me and doesn't forget about me when it's order time, man. If you want to be uh, one of the cool kids, you can call me or text me at 862-312-2026. Yes, that's a cell phone. Text it, call it, whatever. Um, save that number. Save it for when the time comes. It's 862 312 Two zero two six. Well, welcome. What's going on? Um, we are talking about soft washing this week, and before I get too into it, the term soft washing. Uh, all we're talking about is using chemical to clean siding, really, or anything. Soft washing just means you can put your hand in front of the water and it doesn't hurt. That's when everybody's using the cliche term like soft washing is like Kleenex. It covers all of that. And if you're not doing it, it's one of those add-ons that makes so much sense. As a window cleaner, we are able to offer pressure washing or soft washing. As a pressure washer or soft washer, you can add window cleaning. It's an awesome, awesome add-on to go both back and forth. Both ways. It's just huge. You can do upsells. You can sell the people who are existing. You could do all of that with soft wash. It's pretty stinking awesome. Um, but there is some things that you need to do for equipment. There are some different types of equipment that you want to use. Now, uh, guys that you see who are painters or that are just kind of fly-by-nighters that are doing pressure washing in general, those are the guys that are spending four hours to get half a house done and they're using pressure and they're up there on a ladder and they're just hitting it real close. Sure, you can use pressure to clean. We know that. You, that's how you clean concrete. You can put high pressure on a lot of things. But one thing you don't want to put high pressure on is siding. Uh, anything with algae or biologics like that is something you just don't want to do. You don't want to use pressure. There's easier, better, faster ways. Faster is the key. Faster means efficient. Efficient means money. So that's where soft washing comes into play. Basically think of it this way. It is the equivalent of taking a pump up sprayer and spraying something down with a chemical and then hosing it off. But way faster and easier. That's what soft washing is. Soft washing is huge for houses. Huge for um, houses that have algae, so I moved down south. And if you are down south, you've seen it. Everything is covered in that greenish, green-black, like, algae. Everything, right? Um, roofs have algae on there. Um, those are the black streaks. Uh, you get a lot of that. Now, I'm from Wisconsin where the largest patch of, of um, 
really algae in general I've seen was probably the size of a football. And I was like, whoa, this house is so bad. I had no idea. My house now, I get my house washed uh, by one of the local guys here. Uh, and uh, I've done it myself uh, with all the, the tools and things that I do, um, running kind of out of time. So I've gone and tried and done it both ways. I've done it myself also, just in general. But it gets done at least once a year. And by this time of the year, it's awful. You walk outside and it just looks like it hasn't been done in 10 years. That's the South for you. The benefit, if you're in the South, is that there's a ton of work. The downside is, is that everybody else who sees it sees it's a bunch of work and they'll come and they everybody starts a company here i got guys who are doing house washers for 99 dollars, and we'll talk about pricing we'll get to that uh don't be the 99 dollar guy but with high competition means there's a lot of people who play on on price so you have to educate your market and you have to explain why you're awesome i did uh, a couple weeks ago actually i did the 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 discount code which by the way if you listen to the end you'll get the discount code this week but uh, it was to tell me your USP. And I had a bunch of people say it. And it finally is starting to kick in with some people that have not had one, not really thought about it. And now they're starting to think about it. So it's awesome. Awesome. The USP is your unique selling point. That's how you sell yourself in a saturated area. Anyway, back to soft washing. So basically the main chemical in soft washing or house washing or roof cleaning and all the stuff with green algae uh, or biologic, something that's alive, right, is, you've heard it called SH, which is the fancy term for, or the, the abbreviated term for the fancy word, which is sodium hypochlorite, which is like bleach, which is liquid chlorine, which is all of that kind of stuff. Some guys use pool shock, which are just different versions and different concentrations. But really, when you're using an SH, I always get it from a chemical manufacturer because I know it's fresh. I know I can get it in percentages and they know their stuff other than going through somebody who had been sitting around for a while and sold to somebody who sells it to somebody else who puts it in their store. Um, but 12.5% SH is what you hear. That's pretty common. 12.5% is kind of, it's not like if I add a little bit more water, now the percentage goes down, right? That's the percentage of the concentrate itself. It's kind of, that's the number you want to go for. If you're looking at like a Clorox on the shelf is like 6%, you can get some pool shocks. Sometimes they're claiming like 10%. I believe you can even get uh, SH at 15%, which is even more than really we need it for. But you have to remember that with SH in general, sun kills it. So it starts to break down. So as soon as it's made, it starts to get weaker every day. They do the dip test. Do the dip test. Put your finger in there. Finger turns white. You can see the kind of fastest work and that type of thing. But... Those are the percentages. Don't get caught up in that, really. All it means is that when you make your mix ratios, if you're using a pool shock or something less than 12.5%, you just got to go a little stronger on that mix. But you can't really expect uh, to go with a super, super weak mix and have it do something. Now, I've had a drum. Uh, as soon as I got out of the industry in the pressure washing side, I still had a drum that sat around for... Uh, a year. Um, this is back in Wisconsin, so they didn't really use that one either. We had gotten new fresh stuff in. And uh, it can go bad. It can go dead. It can get real weak. And you can still find uses for it, but uh, it starts to kind of break down. But anyway, so with those chemicals, that is what you see. When you see these awesome videos where somebody sprays something, time lapse, and everything just disappears, it actually turns black and then disappears. That's what's happening. You're shocking that, really killing it, and as it disappears, it's, it's just dying. And then you can rinse that kind of all off the, the, the siding. We'll talk siding kind of for the most part. So the big kind of um, transition or why it's so easy is that the algae itself, you have to hit with every square inch of pressure. And when you get close enough, you're only dealing with an inch or two of width on your spray tip, right? Well, with uh, soft washing in general, you're like hosing the whole side of a property or house down. That is super, super fast. I can do a cookie cutter 2,500 square foot house in heavy algae in like two hours, like less. That's with setup, tear down, talking to the neighbor and moving stuff, you know? It's very, very, very fast to do it that way. Now, again, we'll talk pricing kind of down the road, but 
Soft washing is just the easiest way that you could possibly do to clean. Now, you're using the chemical and the chemical's doing the cleaning or the killing in this case, so you don't need the pressure. Uh, but there's really two different types of systems that you can use to do this. Now, you're not gonna need to necessarily use pressured tip to then clean it off. If, you, if you're using a chemical, you're downstreaming it or upstreaming, you're spraying it down, and then you are using pressure to take it off, your mix isn't strong enough. You should be able to just rinse it at that point. And I'm gonna tell you my favorite way out of the system. So there's basically two types. Now there's variances of each type, but there is a soft washing uh, 12 volt style pump, which is the kind that hooks up to a battery. It just pumps the solution out and puts it down, and then you have to run uh, fresh water through there or plumb it so that you can run fresh water through that same pump. Or there is a pressure washer that is changed in basically orifice size of the tips that allows you to draw chemical and apply it that way. That's the preferred method for me. That's what I like to use. Now, when I say 12 volt on some of them systems, there are um, also uh, booster styles and things like that where you get a lot more flow. Uh, but I like the pressure washer aspect and I'll tell you why. Is I may not be able to do roofs with it, which you guys will probably comment that people do do roofs with like an X-Jet, which is a tip. But um, I like the fact that I can do hard stuff. So I can do flat surface cleaning, I can do uh, concrete pavers, stone walls, all that stuff with pressure. And then I could just put a different tip on, and now I'm doing soft washing. It's just awesome, super, super versatile. But that means that my uh, trailer setups that I make have to have the pressure washer. And then I also put a roof kit on the back, which is like we talked about, just a standard 12 volt to spray. Um, to doing it that way, you have to have the two systems. But um, I like the kind of versatility of having that. So with that all being said, there's... With the pressure washing style, there's really kind of two ways to go about that. You can do an upstream injector, which would be like the X-Jet, which you've probably heard of. The X-Jet is a super popular, very, very easy uh, tip. X-Jet M5 is the one that you should be getting. The M5 just means it's adjustable, so you can go to a fan, and then you can go to a jet, back to a fan. So as you're getting closer down low, you can go to a fan, and you're trying to get eaves and peaks, you can actually go to zero. Um, and that tip and the orifice, the way that that tip works is it still allows the draw of chemical. Now, to kind of nerd out a little bit on the injectors, how an injector works is there's a little ball. You can go ceramic or stainless or whatever. You can go different versions depending on what you're sucking. But in that little injector, there's a little, little nipple thing that sticks off. And in there, there's a the little ball. And that ball is seated under pressure. So when you have high pressure, like you're running with a regular tip and you're cleaning concrete, the pressure is so high that that ball is uh, pushed, seated, and closed. It doesn't allow you to draw chemical. But with these specialized tips, or even soft wash tips, which are nozzles that are wider, that open it up, that pressure is actually dropped, right? Because there's so much of an opening that you don't get a ton of pressure, right? You can put your hand in front of it. There's a soft washing term. But with that is a draw of chemical that allows that, that ball to drop and allows chemical to come through. So with an upstream injector, the tip does the work. Uh, with all of them, even if you're using an injector back at the machine, that ball still drops. So the two different types with a pressure washer would be with an X-Jet up front, you carry the solution with you and the solution is right there at the gun. Everything exits the system and goes then through the tip and that's upstreaming the chemical. And then a downstreamer itself is where you have the same type of injector, which we just talked about, but back on your pressure washer. Uh, a lot of guys have gotten even littler units that aren't really spec'd out commercially um, that have had the little thin clear tubing that comes off the pressure washer. That is because there's an injector in there. Um, the injector is always set to a certain uh, amount of chemical. You can adjust them in some cases and things like that. But again, it's closed when you're running pressure. If you want to soak up, soap up, suck up soap, you got to change the tips. So those are the two options. The X-Jet, for me, if you have a system, it just depends on your preference, really. 
I have downstream injectors where I have big chemical tanks on the trailer. And then I have to turn a valve. That opens it up because remember with those tips, it's always drawing chemical unless you close it off with a valve. Same thing with an X-Jet. The valve's right at the gun. So with an X-Jet, you're talking about that little attachment's maybe $170 to $199. Very, very inexpensive to change any pressure washer into that. Now, again, my preference, you got to be over four gallons a minute at least. Anything really under that, you're going to run into issues. You're not going to be rinsing as fast. It's going to take a long time. And it's going to drive you bonkers. So you have to get a little bit of a beefier system. But that tip is really relatively inexpensive. Um, if you go with an injector back of the system, then it's always drawing through and the chemical is going through all of your hose before it comes out. That's one of the downfalls. So you're going to wear out your uh, fittings quicker. You're going to have more... Um, issues with uh, o-rings and things like that maybe not o-rings that's really kind of your on and off and your connections themselves but things start wearing more because you're putting chemical through all of your hose now when i say wearing more it's not like you know after two houses the things explode but you are doing a little bit more wear whereas with an x jet that's the tip on the end that's adjustable that one is letting the solution come out only through the tip and it's not going through the rest of your your hose basically so two different options there the nice thing is is that when you're still pushing out say four gallons a minute but you're at a lower pressure when you turn the soap off now you're rinsing at four gallons a minute you still have the adjustability for the tips you still have all of that right there at your fingertips and it is uh, all still at the same gallons per minute that's why I like running with pressure washer um, you get to kind of have more versatility that way uh, than you would with a standard 12 volt. Now, some people want to take, we sell something called a roof kit. Our roof kit itself is um, a great option for roofs, but it's not really a great option for siding. It's just a simple 12 volt system. It's 549, super cheap. So people kind of want to get into that option. But that one, then you have to plumb in fresh water lines to be able to use your same gun and tips and everything. And then you have to know some plumbing. And it just doesn't quite have the flow that a pressure washer would, in my opinion. It's just not really set up for that. But it's a DIY system, and you can use that however you really like. There's other systems on the market that are designed that way with all the plumbings already set up for fresh water lines after and the fresh waters for the rinse. Um, but that's basically... And I'm talking super fast. So you guys that know this probably aren't even listening anymore. But if you got questions, shoot me an email and all this. Jersey at windowcleaner.com. But we're going to kind of keep going on it. But basically, those are your two systems that you have option-wise. If you go with the pressure washer and an X-Jet, super, super simple, super versatile. And it has um, all of the adjustability right at your fingertips. You got the on-off. You got your spray pattern to fan, uh, I'm sorry, your fan to jet pattern right there. And then the chem barrel, if you get the X-Jet pail system, it's an enclosed pail, super nice to carry around. But the downfall is you're carrying five gallons of chemical around with you. You get to kind of tailor what is in there. But the big thing is when you're doing downstreaming like this, not the 12 volt version, but downstreaming, up, upstreaming, you're mixing it with water. So you can't get as strong with that. And that's why your x jetting or downstreaming on a roof doesn't really work very well i know people are going to argue and say they do it go ahead more power to you awesome i like to just 12 volt that up there because i can go with a 50 50 mix and just cook the stuff off right whereas you can't get so strong because it's always mixing with water in the pressure washer so something to kind of think about with a house uh my mix on a downstreamer is I'm going to actually, usually in the south, I'm going to run pretty darn straight on the uh, SH because I'm going to mix with water and I can get nice and hot, right? But then I'm going to put in what's called a surfactant. And a surfactant is, for all intents and purposes, the sticky part of the soap, okay? It makes everything cling a little bit better. And there's boosters. So Fresh Wash is the one that I very much like. There's a lot of other ones, uh, Roof Snot and... and there's a ton of those different ones. But Fresh Wash does have a little bit of a floral scent. It's a cover, but it's still going to smell like a pool no matter what you do. Uh, but the, the the other side of it is the other properties it has. Not only the cling, the boosting factors, all that. It helps it stick 
where it needs to so that the chemical can work. If it's just water and it runs down, it only had a couple seconds to kind of hold there. So you want to add a surfactant. Now, with a surfactant, you're only really adding, you know, an ounce per gallon of mix, that kind of thing. It's very, very low, but it helps immensely. So if you're getting into it, try Fresh Wash. This is a plug. Yes, we sell it. It's not something that we designed um, or came up with, but the stuff is awesome. So try that with that. But you have to use that no matter what system you go with. Even if you're doing roofs with a 12 volt, you have to use a surfactant that keeps the cling, keeps it stuck there, right? If you took a foamer, you've seen the foamers and you sprayed the foam down, it would stick to the wall very well. Downside with foamer, if you didn't know, is the foam actually is chemical wrapped in bubbles of air and that's why it makes foam. But the only downside is, is that only the part that's touching is doing something. All the foam that sits off there, none of that else is doing something. So you're wasting a ton of chemical and uh, you're actually thinning out the chemical with air. So some people like foamers. They're more for show. Not really great. Don't, don't invest in a, in a foamer, in my opinion, at least. But once you actually get onto a house, um, you can do it pretty quick. I do two sides of a house and this is my process. I go in and I rinse, meaning no soap, I turn the valves. I rinse all the plants, the grass, everything first because I don't want to burn anything means kill the grass. I don't want to do that. I'll rinse everything down. Then I turn the soap on and now I'm going to spray from the bottom to the top. And that's how you spray the chemical. I'm going to do that real light so it sticks but not floods, right? I'm going to do that and then hit all the dormers. I'm going to face the gutter, um, the, uh, gosh, the, uh, uh, the soffit fascia, gosh. And I'm going to do all that, and then I'm going to let it dwell. Dwell just means letting it sit there. That's what I'm going to do two sides of the house. I'm going to do the first side, and then I'm going to go to the second side. I'm going to spray that down the same process that I just did. I'm going to wet both of them. I'm going to rinse both of them, soap one, soap the other, and then I'm going to go back while they're both dwelling, go back to rinse water and rinse the first side down. And now rinsing, you start at the top and rinse down as compared to when you wash is down to up. I'm going to do that and I'm going to wait. The time is when everything starts clearing up. So your dwell time all depends on what the weather is out, what you're trying to get off, how hot your solution is, all of that. Then I go to the second side, do the same thing. Uh, that's been dwelling even longer. Uh, dwell time, as long as it's not really drying on there, it's not a bad thing. Rinse it off, two sides done, move on, do the same thing all the way around the house. Super, super, super fast. Um, there are sometimes areas that are so thick that the solution you're putting up there, the soap, if you will, the SH, that is not able to get through all of the layers or thickness of it. It'll take the top layer off and some will still be on. All you do is just hit it again. You just spray it again, get that shock, right? And you're good, then you rinse it off. The one thing about the shock that you want to know is if you do rinse backwards and you get drips on things, you'll see that initial shock will be clean or clear, almost spots on there, and the rest of it won't. And that initial shock, that, that SH on a dry uh, siding that has uh, algae, that is what actually does the cleaning. So that's why you go from the bottom to the top. If you go from the top, then you have drips and splatters and everything else. <coughs> Um, so that's why you kind of go that route, but, um, doing it that way saves you the headache of potentially burning stuff. That's why some people are like, oh, I don't really rinse. As I rinse, everything's getting, I, I rinse the plants. I do the soap. I let it dwell. I rinse the plants again, then I rinse the siding. And then with that, all of the water that you're putting up there to rinse the siding uh, saturates everything and you're diluting all of the chemical back down. With roofs, you're not rinsing roofs. You have more of uh, that kind of hot, more concentrated stuff as it comes down. But that's how I do a house. My house prices um, start at $249 uh, for simple houses in the south. And in the north, I'm at $399. Now you think, well, why can't you charge all of it depending on where you are? It's just mindset. I probably could, and I've raised the prices. When I say two forty nine in the South, two ninety nine is really the lowest I can ever remember doing one. Two forty nine is what we say. 
Um, and then it goes up from there. So bigger houses take a little bit longer, super easy. And like I said, you're making $299 in two hours. So great money. Uh, with house washing, I can run one guy because I'm not on ladders. You know, if you're on ladders, you should always have two. Uh, if you're doing roofs, you need to have two because one person's always rinsing, always hosing everything down. But that's kind of how you do a house. That is the simplest way for um, doing house washing that I can think of is an XJet M13, uh, M M5, uh, number 13, if depending on your machine, or number 9, and uh, SH. That's it. Now you're a house washer. It's super, super, super quick. The nice thing with it is if you do start to get into that, and you've watched videos, yes, it's that easy. If you start to get into that, now you can go in and say, hey, we're selling a house wash. Somebody says, I want a house wash. You go, great. Well, when we're done, uh, we try very hard to rinse everything down, but the dirt does have to go somewhere. We don't want to force water where it doesn't belong, so we rinse the windows as well as we think, but sometimes you get some spotting. But uh, we also do window cleaning, and we can come back and do all those windows after the house is clean so that everything is 100%. We'll do that. We can add that on for $99. Now, $99 is about 20 minutes worth of work with a water-fed pole on the outs. Super, super fast. All you're doing is finishing up the windows. They're already clean because the solution and everything kind of did most of the work. And it's a great, great add-on. The other thing is, is that if you don't do pressure washing or soft washing and you're a window cleaner or you're a pressure washer and you don't do window cleaning, there's somebody out there that does both. And what's going to happen, could happen, is that you do the windows, but you don't offer the other service. Well, they find somebody who offers the other service, and that other company says, hey, we also offer window cleaning, which they've been using you. And they go, well, that'd be really nice to get it all done at one time. Boom, done. So you could very well lose work by not offering both of them. There's such a close add-on that it is definitely something that you should think about adding on. And with the right system, we sell starters a starter kit, you're talking about $2,600, $2,700. That is the unit, the X-Jet, the solution, the hose, the guns, the tips. It comes with uh, also with uh, an injector and uh, the surfactant fresh wash and a uh, flat surface cleaner for concrete, all of that. So you're talking about portability still there. Don't have to be on a buffer tank every time. And uh, the price is not crazy. So there you go. Those are the options. This was a requested episode from someone who I didn't write down. I'm looking at it now. It is just a bullet point. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whoever said that you should talk soft washing. This was a babbly kind of nonsensey kind of episode where it was just a lot of information. But if you're still listening, you're treated, you're rewarded by a 5% discount. And uh, yeah, let's let's say uh, this discount this week is soft wash. You tell me soft wash, you get a 5% discount. But like I say every week, you have to do this through me. You can't just go on the website or ask Alex or somebody else because it has to be through me. Otherwise, you don't get the discount. And you can't put the order in and then try to get the discount later. It just does not work that way. This is a discount if you call me, text me, say what's up, 862-312-2026. Let me know soft wash and then you get the discount, okay? Uh, if you have questions, truly, this is kind of a big subject, but let me know. Jersey at window cleaning, uh, I'm sorry, jersey at windowcleaner.com. And uh, if it's something that you want to get, that code on that kit will save you a ton of money. And you'll get into something really awesome. The one thing when you're looking for SH, find a chemical supplier around you, they're everywhere. You'll find it in good quantity and. Uh, you'll make a ton of money with it. So something to really, really think about. So, uh, yeah. That's our episode this week. Thank you very, very much for thumbs upping and commenting and hearting the uh, episode on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, whatever. Again, my number is 862-312-2026. Call me, text me, order through me, please. Begging you. Thank you very, very much. And uh, until next week, go out there and be epic.